Well, thank you everybody for coming in this morning. So hopefully everybody's enjoying the Days of .NET conference. Is this everybody's first time or have you guys been to these conferences before? First? Okay, so you're a veteran. So what do you think about the rebranding to DevUp? Um, I think it's applicable to the wide variety of different sessions they mm -hmm. offer. And obviously this being one of them. I mean, this is not a typical developer conference talk, but it's one that I, it's very similar. I gave one talk back at um, Nebraska Code Camp back in March. And that was one of my first presentations that I've given, and I've given a couple of these others and kind of adapted it for the audience in this uh, situation. Uh, so who here already listens or does a podcast or have thought about doing one? What are some of your favorite ones that you like to listen to? Oh, uh, Major Spoilers, it's a comic book podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I listen to that one a lot. Steve Austin's podcast about wrestling. Yes, that's, a, that's really a good one. And Jim Ross, The Ross Report, that's a fantastic one. What about you? Uh, JavaScript Driver, uh, Star Talk, Radio. Mm -hmm. Adventures in Angular. Okay. So, most, a lot of science and coding focuses. Okay. Oh, uh, you guys? Uh, I listen to Armour and um, Pat Flynn. Yes, Smart Passive Income. And I'll, I'll tell you, I met Pat twice, actually, this year. One was at New Media Expo out in Las Vegas back in April, and then again at Podcast Movement at the end of July, beginning of August. Very kind, genuine, humble guy. What you hear on his shows and everything else is that's who Pat Flynn is. It's a fantastic guy. Um, what about you? Do you listen to anything? And have you thought about starting one? Or? Well, I can't kind of, I would say, kind of intrigued. I would say, I hate to say, well, maybe I'm not the oldest one in here, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I've been listening to the Code Camp podcast for a while. Yeah, I mean, and, and that and that's the thing. Even though they've been around for since like 2002, it's it, the popularity's kind of gone up, then it's gone down, and now it's like really back on a nice upswing. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and a few other little things. So we'll go ahead and get started. Again, uh, my name is Kevin Arvell, and again, thank you all for coming out to listen to me talk about podcasting. Um, again, thank you to our sponsors. If you haven't stopped by their booths. Um, definitely make sure to do so and thank them for being sponsored because without sponsors like these groups it's tough to put these conferences on it's very very difficult so make sure to stop by thank them and uh, check them out so who am I I'm a podcaster video producer and photographer speaker consultant uh, I've got my camera back there my friend Bill's helping man the cameras and uh, so again, I'm doing some speaking, doing the podcasting stuff, and then I also help others get their podcast started as well. What is a podcast? We all pretty much, obviously, we, most of us know what a podcast is. It's just simply a digital audio file that's made available on the internet for downloading, you know, easily consumed, whether phone, in your car, on the computer, on your iPod, however that you choose to consume. Um, all of my shows that I'll show you here in a few moments are available. You can listen to them just right there in the web browser. Some are video, some are audio. It just all depends on the podcaster's choices. So some of my background, I've been hosting, co-hosting, guesting, or producing on over 250 episodes of various shows, mostly related about consumer technology. I love smartphones, tablets, applications, and stuff like that. So that's, that's my main focus that I like to talk about. Some of my shows include STL Tech Talk. I've got a booth down at the end of that hallway over there, down next to the Microsoft booth. Uh, yesterday I had kind of like my portable podcasting kit set up. Uh, this show pretty much focuses on St. Louis. Everybody here from St. Louis or near? Okay. So where are you from? Uh, Jeff City area. Jeff City, okay. I was just out at uh, Warm Springs Ranch with the Clydesdales a couple weekends ago. Beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so STL Tech Talk focuses mostly on St. Louis tech startups. I talk to people that have come up um, 
coming up with new software, new applications or devices, and just kind of have them on to tell their stories about what it is that they're doing, why they're doing it, how it came to be, and what they're looking for doing it. In fact, uh, Bill was a guest on it with one of his products. Well, good morning. How are you? Who's Who in St. Louis, my newest show. I'm five episodes in on this, and this is more about people in places of St. Louis that I think are doing great things. It's kind of my personal playground. I get to interview people that I followed, whether they were in radio. Uh, Frank Opinion, for example, he's been in St. Louis radio for 30 plus years. Uh, Thomas Schlafly of Schlafly Beer, Schlafly Brewing. He was my most recent guest on here, and I'm currently finalizing uh, an interview with Jackie Smith, the NFL Hall of Fame tight end from the St. Louis Cardinals when we had football Cardinals, and also played a season with the Dallas Cowboys, I believe. So I'm gonna finalize that and have him on pretty soon. And one of my uh, other guests for this show, Andy Magnus, he's not somebody that's well known, he's just a public, he's just an accountant. Um, but I met him at a networking event and the reason why I wanted to have him on is he said, you know, I've got a cartoon character collect tie collection of about 2,300 ties. And it was, it, you walk down into his, his office downstairs and, you know, he's got boxes of ties, but he, he's got them all hung up. And it's, I'm like, it's, it's great. I'm an old soul, so I like the classic cartoon characters, the Beetle Baileys, Peanuts, and Looney Tunes and all that. It was just, it was something to see. And... I mean, because he says with accounting, it's kind of a boring blah. You know, if I have to wear a tie every day, I'm going to make it fun. I'm going to keep it interesting. So I thought that was interesting. And then this show's more geared not just for people that live in St. Louis, but those who may have lived in St. Louis in the past or have never been to St. Louis trying to say, you know, hey, there's, there's more to St. Louis than what may be reported in the news and try to give them some information, you know, on why they should come visit the city of St. Louis. Tech Informist, again, that's more of a general, more wide-reaching consumer technology-focused show. Talk about Apple, Google, Microsoft, just various other things that may be coming into the world of technology. Codecast, this show actually came about because of stlouisdeza.net. When I first attended and was interviewing speakers back in 2013, uh, we met Gus Emery, who's from Minneapolis and works for Inertia Software. And we all really hit it off well with him. And so we launched this about having a lot of people that are actually here speaking, like Corey House and David Girard and just other people that are you know, well-known speakers around the development circles. And it's been, it's been a really popular show. Um, it's been on hiatus since March because Gus and JJ have just been, for various reasons, unable to record. But we hope to bring it back soon. But the content is still pretty evergreen. And I think it's still something that might be worthwhile to go back and listen to. You know, especially you, you like to listen to development podcasts. Uh, this one we did, it, it's probably more enjoyable watching video via YouTube because the developers can show their screen using Google Hangouts and that's another thing that I'll show in a little bit to actually show the code that they're talking about. MS Mobile Show, this is obviously it's about Microsoft so, uh, devices and services. It's hosted by Vernon E.L. Smith out of Fargo, North Dakota and David V. Kimball from just outside of Seattle, Washington. Um, and it's a big year for Microsoft, 2015 with Windows 10 and launching all these new devices, HoloLens, you know, Band 2 and all these other things. So that show's been doing very well also. So early days of podcasting. I mean, like we mentioned, podcasting's really been around for quite a while. First known as audio blogging because you're, you know, you're putting your thoughts and talking into a microphone and releasing it for people to, to hear. It's not just going to a website and reading. It's easier to consume because you can listen to a podcast while you're driving. You can't really, well, you're not supposed to be reading on your phone while you're driving, yet you always constantly look over and somebody's got their face in their phone. 
August 2002, many of you may know .NET Rocks podcast, one of the more popular ones. Carl Franklin launched that way back 13 years ago. And obviously they're still going today. Him and Richard Campbell, great guys. February 2004 is when podcasting as a term was first combined and mentioned in the Guardian newspaper, Ben Hammersley. Steve Jobs, you know, Apple in 2006 is when iTunes 4.9 finally had full support for podcast. It's one thing that Google is now getting into with having a dedicated podcast app and they're going to be releasing podcasts via the Google Play Store. So if you're an Android user, you won't just have to go buy a separate podcast app. You'll just be able to find it right there in the Play Store. And in 2006 of January, that's when Steve Jobs actually demonstrated how to create a podcast during his keynote address using GarageBand 3. So again, Apple was a big pusher behind the popularity of podcasting, getting it mainstream. So why should you listen to podcasts? Well, I think it's a great way to better yourself. You're learning something new, simply entertaining yourself while you're driving, exercising, or relaxing. It's just a great way. Not everybody wants to listen to music all the time. Not all readers are leaders, but leaders are readers. And President Harry Truman, it's kind of a, a thing they always talk about. Successful people are always reading books. So I think listening to podcasts, audiobooks, is a great way for people to learn and better themselves. So again, podcasts are free. They're easy to consume. Um, another guy that uh, I'll be showing in a few moments. You can listen to so many of his past episodes and then you get to a certain point and then some of them are behind a paywall. So you know, to get access to the older episodes, you might have to pay a little bit more, but you know, the majority are free and just so easy to consume, whether on the web or on your phone or however you want to enjoy those. Different ways that you can listen. Obviously, we've got iTunes, as mentioned before. I mentioned Google Play Store, which that's coming soon. This image is Pocket Casts, and that's one of my favorite podcast apps that I use, whether I'm using an iPhone, my Android device, a Windows phone, or even on their web version. And it's, it's a paid app, so it's, usually, it's about $4 a piece on each platform. So I've given them $25 because I like to listen to it. And it's, it's very nice that I can start listening on my iPhone and then I can resume it on my Android or resume it on the web and not miss my place. And it can keep everything that I subscribe to. I subscribe to over 100, but honestly, I only listen to like five. But it's just there just in case they release an episode that I think would be really good to listen to. That I can do that. And I mentioned in web browsers, you know, each one of my websites for the shows that I mentioned just a little while ago, you can listen right there on the website itself. Stitcher Radio is another free, I mean, that's a free application, and I try to put all of our shows there as well. And somebody that I talked to at the booth yesterday said, are you available on Stitcher Radio? I'm like, yep. And Stitcher Radio, as more and more car manufacturers are putting in their head units, applications. Stitcher Radio is one of those that's going to be front and center. So it's just easy to punch it up right there. You know, I guess you would log in. I haven't used one of these car stereos with the Stitcher Radio yet, but it's another way to do it and access all your subscribe shows and just listen while you're driving. That's what I listen to when I'm driving around. I rarely listen to a music radio station. It's all podcast all the time. TuneIn Radio is a fantastic application if you like to listen to out-of-town uh, radio stations. I know that's one of the challenges, you know, before when you're driving somewhere and you run out of your signal, you know, on a long-distance trip, you're like, oh, man, i got to scan, scan, find something new to listen to. Well, now TuneIn Radio makes it accessible where you can listen to podcasts. Spreaker's a new service that hosts and broadcasts podcasts. Uh, Rob Greenlee, who used to work with Microsoft to head their podcast division, is now uh, a content manager over at Spreaker. 
And then SoundCloud is a very popular service as well. But a lot of independent musicians like to put their songs and their music there as well. And that's available. There's an app and the web browser as well on that. So what has podcasting meant for me? Well, it's allowed me to get up and talk in front of a group of people. You'd be surprised actually sitting in front of a microphone and actually talking has really helped be kind of an icebreaker. We're here at a developer conference. What are developers typically known for? Kind of being introverts and quiet and not necessarily reclusive, but not exactly most social butterflies. So this has kind of helped me become more open to talking to people and having better conversations. I sometimes find the conversations I'm having with people lead me more towards the interview style, almost where I'm like mini interviewing people. And when I used to attend conferences, I would sit in the back. And now when I go to conferences, I try to sit in the first two rows if possible. And I would never raise my hand to volunteer to answer a question, even in school. Then now I'm like, yeah, I'll answer. So it's kind of helped me just become a more better communicator. And it's just really, and I, and I do enjoy that. And that's one of the nice things. It gives me a chance to talk about things that I love, hence why this is, you know, share your passion with others via a podcast. It gives me a chance to talk about things that I really like to talk about. And I've got numerous other show ideas in my mind, but you know, there's only so much time <laughs> in a week to where I can get everything that I want to talk about out. I'd love to talk about sports. I'd love to talk about history. So that's, I mean, for me, I could be a guest on somebody's show and get a chance to talk about that stuff instead of just having to, you know, get together with friends and just talk about that. It's kind of the, what people could do, you know, just sit, get a group of people together and just set a microphone in the middle of the table and just have a casual discussion. That can be a podcast. It doesn't have to be a rigid structure of, okay, we're going to talk about this, this, this. Just let the conversation go where it may. Uh, me and Bill, we actually did that a few weeks ago. And we just started rambling and talking and, I mean, I haven't released it as an episode, but it's just, it's fun to be able to go back and listen to that discussion on things that you may not remember. Sometimes my memory gets pretty bad and I'm like, yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember what we talked about. Well, now I, with, with that, I could go back and listen to it. So why not create your own podcast? You know, it's, you know, why would somebody not want to? Some people, you know, again, you put down a microphone or put them in front of a video camera and all of a sudden, you know, that person that was really social and outgoing, all of a sudden, they, they don't want to talk. It's like, no, it's, it's okay. So it's kind of like, just relax a little bit and it, don't be intimidated by the microphone in front of you. So that's why I say, I think people should kind of start their own thing and it's, it's another great thing for businesses as well, I feel. As I mentioned, you know, podcasts are important to businesses. It's, just, it's, a, it's a great way to reach new customers. I mean, I don't know if anybody in here has their own business or anything, but it's one of the things I try to convince businesses of why they should be able to do that. You know, it's a great way to reach customers and keep them updated on a more current level. You know, hey, this is what's going on. This is the new trends that we're seeing. This is a great new product line we're getting ready to roll out, and such as that. Let's see. And this kind of just falls into not just what's important to businesses, but you know, we live in this on-demand society. We've got all the, the Netflix, the Hulu, the iTunes, you know, I mean, how many people still keep, uh, does anybody here cancel like their cable and just gone to strictly like Netflix, Hulu? Okay, and I mean, one of the main reasons is probably for cost, right? I mean, it's, it's a lot cheaper. I mean, Hulu's what, $10 a month or something like that? You can watch pretty much everything on demand when you want. It's, it's kind of like having a digital DVR that you don't have to worry about. and can easily, again, you can pull all this stuff up on your phones. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. There's always talk about that with like Fox. Oh, so Directv and Fox can't come to agreement, so we're so they black Fox out until they get the numbers that they can agree upon. And podcast listenership is growing significantly, like I mentioned. Some statistics that were from this year, and this was done a little bit earlier this year by Edison Research, about 33% of people polled in this poll, uh, don't remember the exact number of people that was polled, but 33% of the people that were polled have listened to a podcast. So consumption is definitely back on the rise. It kind of dipped in 2013 a little bit, but as you can see from 2006, you know, it's been a fairly steady increase, except for that one little blip. So I'm not sure what 2013, what that was about, because that's when I started. So I don't know if there was any correlation there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's heard of this cereal? Okay, so one, wow, only one person. Okay, cereal is kind of like been the, the media darling of podcasting. And this was a, this is produced by um, NPR and you know people that do This American Life. Uh, Sarah Koenig and her other producers started this show and it's kind of more of a, talking about a court case out of Baltimore, Maryland about uh, Adnan Syed. And because of this, I mean, his case has been getting a little bit more attention and he was a, a teenager who was accused of murdering his girlfriend in high school. But this is kind of like investigative reporting. So people that like listening to those, that kind of stuff. This show has been super popular. The, the 12 episodes, they do it in seasons. And these 12 episodes have been downloaded over 100 million times in the year since it's been released. And you know they released one season, 12 weeks straight, and now they're working and wrapping up season two and season three, and they're each gonna focus on something completely different. But it's still gonna be along the same uh, topics. And that's actually going, and instead of being available on traditional podcast app, Serial now has an agreement with Pandora. Do we all know Pandora, the music <coughs> streaming service? To where this is gonna be available exclusively on Pandora streaming. So now Pandora's getting into podcasts instead of just music. Anybody know this guy? All right. He's an actor and a comedian, Mark Marin, who interviewed earlier this year in June or July, uh, President Obama. Now this studio here is in Mark's garage in Los Angeles. So the President of the United States, love him or hate him, went to Los Angeles, and this was right around the time of the Charleston, South Carolina shooting. And this was like actually right after it, and he was going, Obama was going out there for, out to Los Angeles for something, and sat, sat in on this, and they talked for approximately an hour or so. And Mark Maron's show is listened to on an average of 700,000 times per episode. And this interview with Obama was downloaded over one million times within the first 24 hours of releasing. It was another one of those uh, viral media hits. And the fun thing about this is the fact that the White House actually reached out to Mark Marin and his producer to be on the show a year prior to this. So this had been in the work for quite a while. And it's you know, just a matter of timing and scheduling and course security they if you listen to this episode and then the kind of like the behind the scenes of this episode they released after it they talk about all the different things that they had to do to make this happen and it's actually pretty fascinating you know all the security and she's like oh my god I just still cannot believe this this is all happening and it's really fun fun stuff and since then I actually started listening to that show just be, because of that so marketing costs, again, you know, it's, it's kind of falls in the line of ways that podcasts can make money is that businesses have marketing dollars. Um, you know, it, I, I mentioned Frank Opinion earlier. Um, you know, he's kind of independent for a radio show. 
and I've talked to other people in radio and they say, you know, marketing dollars and getting ad revenue from sponsors for the radio shows is becoming more and more of a challenge. Well, it's because their, their, their rates are, are much higher than somebody that's wanting to do a podcast. You know, I, I wouldn't have to go to a, a business and say, yeah, $2,000, you can be on my show. I could just simply say, throw out, you know, a couple hundred dollars to pay my hosting costs and help upgrade my equipment and stuff like that. So I think that would be, um, it's, it's just a nice way you can make a little bit of money doing this. And then some people, you know, we mentioned Pat Flynn, they make some pretty good money doing their stuff. And, you know, your business, and it's another way that you could reach other people with different information that you like to talk about. Podcast listeners make money. Again, that kind of goes back to the Harry Truman quote that I mentioned is the fact that the people that are listening tend to make money out of, again, back to the Edison research poll, how do podcast consumers 18 and above $150,000 or more, 14% of that 36% make $150,000 or more, 12% make between 100 and 150, and 10% make between 75 and 100,000. So. Again, that kind of goes back to people that, you know, consume, typically make pretty decent money. I mean, I know we're all not there. And then, so the age breakdown of listenership, of who listens, is this actually kind of blew my mind a little bit about the fact, you know, you've got 20% of the people that were polled were between 25 to 34, 17% were 35 to 44. Then you start getting a little bit older, 45 to 54. 15%, 15%, 55 to 64, 12%, and then the 65 and above, 6%. That's, that's pretty impressive because we typically associate, um, like my dad, for example, would be in that 65 plus percent. I would not expect to see him listening to a podcast, but it, it just shows that people, people that age are, there's, there are the tech savvy uh, citizens that they still like to listen to that kind of stuff. And again, it's podcasts are pretty easy to consume if you've got the right application and using the technology and familiar with things. John Lee Dumas, entrepreneur on fire, makes, is, is this is somebody that actually left a $100,000 plus dollar a year job and sat out about a year kind of researching and learning how to do things and structure this business is what it's more so now. But Entrepreneur on Fire, he talks with entrepreneurs and he releases an episode every single day of the week. So seven episodes a week and he's been doing it for a few years. He's well over a thousand episodes now. So he's been doing it, uh, you know, almost three years I think and you know these are monthly totals of what he brings in between sponsorships um, and his podcasters paradise it's kind of like a private meetup private mastermind kind of group for other podcasters to get in and talk about but that I mean that's that's insane seeing that kind of money that as possible if you've got a good business strategy behind it and actually make that kind of your focus. But the majority of us, like myself included, can do it more so for hobby and for the love of it because we're passionate about the things that we t- want to talk about. So I just throw this in there just to say, well, you know, if you want to take it that direction and you've got a, you know, you're somebody that is really good at marketing or you know somebody that is that can market it and help you build a business, you can. You can do some pretty crazy things. So how could you get started? You know, go back to who would like to, who, who's thought about starting your own show? Anybody? What would you, what would your show be about, do you think? Mm-hmm. I've thought about a couple, one for wrestling, one on board games. Mm-hmm. Uh, those kind of like two passions. Okay. I th- you know, again, that's... As proof by the pro wrestlers that are doing that stuff, Steve Austin, Jim Ross, Chris Jericho, uh, Roddy Piper before he passed away, Ric Flair even has one. Um, 
and it's it's pretty interesting stuff to hear because I mean that's the time frame that I grew up and enjoyed pro wrestling and stuff like that. So that's why I enjoy those those shows. Anybody else? You had your hand up, I think. Yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, digital marketing strategies for businesses. Mm -hmm. I find a lot of small business owners are asking me about websites and uh, you know mobile apps and things like that. But uh, you know, if you find yourself kind of repeating the same things over. It's like you know it'd be nice if I just record that. And, you know, have a discussion. Maybe yeah. You know, Right, and like I said, you make it evergreen so people can go back and listen to it and it's still current content. And you can always update it and kind of like change the title, you know, part two. And it's just an easier way to direct somebody instead of having that long discussion. You're like, you know, if you'd like more information, I give out all these great tips on, you know, whatever the Navy website is, slash whatever, or just find my podcast and stuff like that. Anybody else? No thought about starting one or? I just don't have topics at all. So what kind of things are you, are, do you like to do? Uh, pay the bills. Pay the bills, so, <laughs> so, 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 so a financial podcast. I mean, and honestly, the ones that are financial and the entrepreneur and the, the money, um, does everybody in here familiar with Dave Ramsey? Okay, I mean, I mean, his radio show is turned into a podcast, so people can listen to that. They don't have to listen live. Um, but yeah, money tips and stuff like that. Everybody wants to learn how to better handle their finances or plan for retirement. I know I need to get started, <laughs> so I need some tips like that. Um, what about any, you guys? Thought about doing something or? Mm-hmm. You're like, you know, hey, here's a great place you can go and listen to exactly what I'll tell you right now. And you can be productive and I can still be productive instead of rehashing the same information over and over again. Uh, what about you? I have never thought about it, but, uh, I mean, if I did, you know, some things might be like exercise and fitness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's another with personal training and stuff like that. If if you would be into something like that. And I'm my youngest son, he loves listening to podcasts. So he's always like, "Oh, you should listen to this. You should listen to that." You know, and he's just like, "If yeah." What's that? Yeah. I mean, we always see people walk around, you know, with earphones in, and it's like you're tuned out from the world, but. We don't really know what they're listening to, so maybe they are listening to a podcast and they're actually bettering their life. You know, we, my teenage uh, daughter, she would do that all the time. I'm like, you know, be be in touch with the world, but and I know she wasn't listening to podcasts. I'm like, but if if she was, I'd be like, okay, that's good. You're you're bettering yourself. Um, what about you? Have you thought about starting your own show? Mm -hmm. So I wondered if you know, maybe there was the ability to do either sort of help desk sort of things for students, um, or possibly you know maybe combine some of the different rescue groups in the St. Louis area and do something on animal, you know, helping animals and you know taking care of your animals and you know. Yeah, I mean you could you could release an episode a month. You wouldn't have to do something definitely not daily. <laughs> But not even necessarily weekly. I mean, many shows are weekly. Uh, but you could do something, you know, on one month you could do a segment on cats, next month dogs, um, the kind of drawbacks and things to think about if you're going to uh, get a rabbit or a guinea pig or a hamster. The, it's like, Yeah, somebody left their yeah, somebody left their dog in a hot car or left it chained up outside. Yeah. And what about you in the back? No. No. No, I actually just came here to find out more about podcasts. Okay. And you know, in the older the twelve percent or whatever. Okay. Hasn't really started into it, so I just wanted to 
So I'm just like, what's out there? But what would you be passionate about? Uh, maybe think about maybe travel. down the travel. I think travel would be good because you can get some pretty good sponsorships. At least, you know, if you're traveling to, we'll just say Destin, uh, the Destin Chamber of Commerce or something, you know, sponsor you to come down and let you stay a couple nights for free and tour around the area. There's, I know there's a few. One uh, from St. Louis, uh, Bill Cleveland, he does a segment on Frank Opinion Show. It's Bill on the Road, and it's, it's pretty good. He's done some good stuff with that, but you know, everybody's got our own voice. We've got our own perspective. So just because there's somebody doing a, a Disney World podcast, Lou Mangello out of Florida, is one of the best known Disney podcasts out there. Doesn't mean you can't give your own perspective and give it from a different idea and different visuals. What about you? Sorry I'm late. Uh, That's okay. It happens. I, uh, I like to get into it to do things like, like uh, new topics at work, mm -hmm. new, new toys, new tools. Uh, you know, I use a screen capture called Jing and I absolutely love it. And I try to get people with, uh, they don't want to sit down and try to learn it, but if I can give them a three minute or five minute little. Yeah, just a little tips. And, try, yeah. Try to get them to bite into it. Yeah, so uh, probably a video podcast would be more of what you would want to do. Because yeah, like I said, a podcast doesn't have to be audio. I mean, you look at Pluralsight and Lynda.com, in a way you can kind of look at that as, as a, a, a video podcast in a way. You're learning something, video tutorials. It's kind of similar, but you would want to add in a little bit, you know, some story and stuff before and after. And then, all right, we're going to get into the main topic for this segment this module just different things to to think about so again you know as we ask show topics what what you would want to talk about that's obviously it's very very important a creative name and a logo that can be something that can be a bit of a challenge um, you know the codecast one that I came up with is just we just sat around and thought okay well we all were about the same age grew up in the Atari days so the you know, and then Nintendo, the 8-bit pixels and stuff like that, and then we threw in some binary code that actually, if you would run that binary code, it does mean, I can't remember what it, I think, okay, I, I, I don't remember exactly what it did mean, but it was that for a reason. I plugged in specific words into the binary generator and it came up with this code. Okay, copied and pasted that into the logo, and that's what it came out to be. So it, the code did mean something. Website to go with it, uh, like I mentioned, people can go to any of those websites, which will branch off my personal website, uh, so people can listen or learn more about it, or if, you know, depending on what it is, you can you can blog with it along with it. Uh, travel, for example, would be good. The pro wrestling would be good to keep up with pro wrestling news. Uh, what you're talking about with development stuff like that, just little tips, share stories that you find on the internet that are interesting. Uh, fitness, of course, would be fantastic. There's always exercise plans you can put on there for visuals and how to do specific <laughs> positions and moves and stuff like that. It's always good. Microphone, headphones, and mixer. Um, I don't know if anybody saw my setup over on the booth yesterday. I'll set it back up again uh, this afternoon and probably will be doing some interviews today. But yeah, feel free to stop by and that's what I'm using now. I originally started with just a laptop and one microphone. And microphones range in price. You can get a $20 mic, you can get a $50 microphone, or you can spend up to three to $400 on a microphone, depending on how serious you want to get. Um, I use the ATR2100. It's from Audio-Technica. And it's a, I believe it's a dynamic mic. And it's only about $50 on Amazon. Uh, sometimes you get it on sale for about 40. So when you do find it on sale, it would be a good choice to get. It's a USB, so it plugs right into your computer. Or it also has the XLR to plug into a mixer, which that's like the little three prong round thing that's you know, traditional for my. Hmm? Some of these apps and things like that. I mean, in other words, if you wanted to 
just just start out and try it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, is there like a bare minimum you need to do because the playback is just going to be so horrible that you mm -hmm. know, or pretty much the playback would be decent on anything. Well, people that remember Napster in the days of downloading MP3s and stuff like that, there was always, okay, it's 128 kilobit per second, and you knew, well, that audio file will be tolerable. Not really great for music, that's why you would want the 320. Uh, for spoken words like uh, podcast, I export my MP3s as, at 96 kilobits per second, and I feel that sounds good. Um, Google, Stitcher, when, uh, what well, Stitcher definitely does, they'll take the file as it is at 96 kilobits, they'll, when they import it into their system, they do re-encode it. I'm not exactly sure what bit rate they re-encode it to, and Google will do the same thing. Um, but it doesn't really change the quality too much. I haven't noticed from Stitcher to what I listen on iTunes or Pocket Cast still sounds the same. Um, and mixers, there's different ranges, different levels. I bought one that has four channels, so I can have me and three guests. I figure that's kind of the maximum of an in-person discussion I personally would have. Um, there are mixers out there where you can just have you and one other person. So of course those would be cheaper, or you can use a digital audio recorder called the Zoom H4N that can plug two XLR channels into it that's really good, make it real portable. Or if you've got an iPhone, you can record, you can record and do an entire podcast, sound effects and everything, just from an app called Boss Jock. It's a $10 app for iPhone. You just plug a microphone in using a $30 uh, lightning to USB camera connector that you plug into the bottom and you can record your entire podcast on your iPhone. Boss Jock. And it's, it's a fantastic little application. And then I, I always throw headphones in there because if you're doing a video podcast using like Hangouts or Skype, um, you want to have your own headphones plugged in. That way you're not getting the speaker feedback the sound coming out of your speakers going back into the mic and hearing that echo. It's one of the things that whenever I was using Hangouts for our shows, I always request a guest, headphones. Headphones, I can hear echo. <laughs> so, Obviously, you need a computer or a digital recorder to capture your audio. Like I mentioned, the Zoom H4n, that would be good. Bill, how much did you pay for yours? Was it 200 for the digital recorder? And then software to edit your audio. I use Audacity. That's free on both PC and Mac. And you can pretty much do anything you need to do in there. Silence parts, uh, amplify your audio, raise the level up a little bit. And it's, it's, it's a good little piece of software and it's free. It can be a little uh, cumbersome trying to figure it out. It's not really laid out the greatest, but it still services everything very well that I enjoy it. And you can also use GarageBand if you're a Mac user. Uh, GarageBand is free, but you can get additional sound loops and stuff like that for sound effects for a few extra dollars. And then a web host for your audio, audio files. They've got to be hosted somewhere else because you don't want to have your audio files stored on your own personal website. Because if for some reason you get an episode that's extremely popular and all of a sudden so many people are hitting your website with data traffic, it can bring your website down by having a, a big surge of traffic. So I'm not an uh, affiliate mar marketer or promotion or anything, but I use Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com to host all my shows and actually they host uh, like Mark Marin, that show that I mentioned before, they host a lot of the well, podcast one does uh, some as well. Uh, but I, f I feel Libsyn gives the best bang for the buck for anywhere, I mean you can start at $5 a month um, for it's like 200 megabytes of st storage m a month 
and then whatever you upload that first month rolls into the second month for free and then you start a new cache of being able to upload stuff uh, and you can go up to like twenty dollars a month and get 400 megabytes I mean, most of my episodes, if it's about an hour long, they export into about 40, around the 40 to 50 megabyte range at 96 kilobits per second. So you can get quite a few episodes in there out of the 400. And you get more detailed statistics to find out where people are listening. I mean, I can go into my statistics and find out what state people are listening. Not like city, but state, country, how they're listening, whether it's a mobile device, Android, iTunes, or what, even what web browser, if they're listening to it on the web. So get, it doesn't break down by like uh, male, female, or age, or anything. There's really no way, unfortunately, to, to tell that. So you're, even if, I mean, if you have a web host already, mm -hmm. you're recommended like even maybe a second account with that same hosting service? Well, well, like for example, uh, GoDaddy is my web host for websites, and then I host my audio files on Libsyn. So the web host handles the website, and then Libsyn handles that. When I upload a new episode to publish, um, Libsyn will distribute that. It creates the RSS feed that you then submit to everywhere, that when you publish a new episode, it just goes out everywhere that you want it to. And then it gives you embed codes to where you can then embed into your website so people can listen to it there. And it doesn't count again. It's not hitting your web traffic. Right. I was saying, I mean, like a second GoDaddy account. No. To host it. No. Okay. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. So and then again, if you want to do a video, YouTube is super popular. They've rolled out YouTube Red. If anybody has or hasn't heard of that yet, it's YouTube Red is their new ad free for ten dollars a month. But that ten dollars also gets you uh, Google Play Music and YouTube Music. So it's a pretty good deal. I haven't bought into it just yet, um, but I do love YouTube and it's. It's the most popular video platform out there. Uh, we've done numerous episodes on Google Hangouts on air because it's, it's a great way that it's automatically, you have that backup recording, even though we'll use that or a new service that's called Blab. We still record our audio local on our own machine and then my co-host or whoever I'm talking to will send me their audio file just to make sure you're not deal cause dealing with an internet connection. I could have a good connection or a bad connection, same with them. And you hear those cutouts. And then the final product, since we'll have pure audio, will be clean. And you won't have that when we're producing the audio only version. But Google Hangouts is great for uh, the ones that want to do like a coding or something where you can share your screen. Um, one of the images that should be in here is with Mark Miller. He came on one episode of CodeCast and was showing off his developer's keyboard, a uh, little uh, numer numeric keyboard that he had set up and programmed to do little coding shortcuts that he uses most frequently. It was programmable and he was, had picture in a picture actually. So he was sharing his screen of the code and then had another camera set up just on this keyboard to show what he was doing and it was correlating on the screen. It was, it was really neat to see. And in fact, there's a, a screenshot of it. So he was using the Code Rush stuff, and then, I mean, that's, that's him with his second, you know, second camera, picture in a picture of it. And I mean, my mind was blown that he was doing it. I'm like, this is so cool. I uh, mean, being a not being a developer, I was just producing and watching along. I'm like, oh my god, that is that's so neat, just the different things that. I would have to check with him to see how he did this. I'm wanting to say he probably used something like Camtasia or something like that. Yeah, running some extra software on top of Hangouts. But, you know, it was just whatever, whatever he could see on his screen was what was being shared. Because whenever you do the screen share, you can, you have 
multiple different options, what, however many windows you have open, which window you want open. So he was able to get it combined and to share that, and that's what was recorded for people to see. And I thought that was just fantastic, but multiple use cases for something like that. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, contact me. I've, I'll have cards or something like that, and you'll also have a slide at the end of this. Um, if you're in the St. Louis area, there's um, a local Facebook group called St. Louis Podcasts, meetup groups. You know, you're in Jefferson City. I don't know if there's a Jefferson City podcast meetup group. I mean, you never know. Just look on meetup.com or something like that. Um, ask around. We're in St. Charles. Two Guys Talking Podcast Network is, is here. They're located just a few minutes from here. It's a full-fledged little recording studio. Um, it's a really great little area. Mike Wilkinson uh, runs that. STL Vernacular is kind of a, it's a website by Adam Frick that has started the kind of aggregates a lot of the St. Louis created shows onto just one website to just make discoverability a lot easier. Um, Q&A time. Anybody? Questions? Anything? So how do you get the guests? I mean, how do you get like Frank O'Kane to talk? Um, since he does, re um, you know, via email originally, um, and then they did something at uh, Londoff Chevrolet. They had a special event on a Saturday, and that's when I actually went and asked him in person, and he said, "Yeah, sure." And that's kind of been another thing. Um, it's given me the con, you know, the confidence to reach out to. You know, pretty much anybody and just ask. The worst they can do is say no. I mean, the answer is always no if you don't ask. Um, so I mean, like Paul Thrott or Mary Jo Foley, people that cover Windows and Microsoft, you know, just hit them up on Twitter. And then that led to, okay, well, here's my email address. And I reached out and we set up a day and time. And it's given me a chance to talk to a lot of different people that I didn't think that I would. Um, so. It's just a matter of asking with uh, Jackie Smith, the NFL tight end. I know somebody that actually knows him, so I reached out to him and they put me in the connection. And then next thing I know, Jackie Smith's calling me from his cell phone. I'm like, oh my God, I got Jackie Smith's phone number now. <laughs> so it's like, whoa, it's, it's, like, it's still surreal at times. And when people are like, how did you get so and so? I'm like, just asked. Um, and I do have an in to get possibly John Goodman, the actor from, uh, so he, I'm hoping that's gonna work out. He's doing a lot of promotion with that new movie that just opened uh, yesterday, uh, Meet the Coopers or something. It's a Christmas kind of movie. But his, his great nephew is a half sister to my lady, my, that I went, a girl I went to school with, so. It's, it's like, it's, you just never know that six degrees of separation. Uh, but no, there's, that's how you can uh, connect with me after this. Um, web, pretty much if you just go to kevinharvell.com, you can find every, everything branches from there. Uh, that's got STL Tech Media, Who's Who in St. Lou, STL Tech Talk, and links to the other shows that I mentioned as well. Hmm? I don't recommend any copyright material. Uh, when it comes to like Who's Who in St. Lou show and the intro and outro stuff, I just created it myself through GarageBand, just threw a few loops together and stuff like that. Because um, there's one thing that came, happened on SoundCloud uh, a long time, pretty well established. I'd never listened to it or even heard of it, but there was an article a couple weeks ago about SoundCloud they used to host all their stuff and it got you know a third strike thing you know the first time they're like okay you know sorry and that's kind of the same thing with YouTube uh, they've got algorithms and things that search through the files that look for similar music and I've even had stuff I'm like well I created it in GarageBand and then YouTube's like okay it's okay to monetize it after they like oh yeah we screwed up 
but SoundCloud just wiped his entire show. So SoundCloud, I definitely steer clear of paying for them and having them be your, your main host. You can use SoundCloud as the main host, but I wouldn't, I don't think I'd recommend it as, as the main, main host. Libsyn, they give you the monthly downloads and stuff like that. Um, no, no, I, ju I just use the Libsyn analytics. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if they listen to five seconds or an hour. So that's the only real downside of, of that that bums me out. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, gotchas that you've experienced with sponsors or sponsorships? Any, say that again? No, no, actually Tech Systems is a sponsor of STL Tech Talk. Um, they've been a sponsor for months now, so they've been a long time sponsor. And, uh, you know, always working on other sponsorships. Most of them right now don't have sponsorships. There's different ways. We try to do kind of like a, a Patreon style, where Patreon's kind of like a Kickstarter for that, but it's like a subs subscription base where somebody can give at least you know, as minimum as a dollar a month just to help support the show. Well, if you got 300 dedicated listeners that give a dollar a month, then it's 300 a month, more than pays for that. And then, of course, you can do T-shirts and coffee mugs and stickers and stuff like that that, you know, that helps provide that, that you can give back to your listeners. It's just you're limited to your own creativity when it comes to that stuff. That's, that's another avenue to, to make money for people. So, I don't know if anybody has any other questions, and uh, I, again, thank you all for coming in and sitting in. Uh, I don't know how they're doing the session reviews, but hopefully you got something out of it and felt it was worth your 8 o'clock morning hour to come in. So, thank you all for coming. <laughs>